current liabilities. We're going to be looking at two of them, unearned revenue and short-term notes payable. Characteristics of liabilities. They exist as a result of a past transaction or event that gives rise to a present obligation which requires a future payment of cash or services. So the past gives rise to a present obligation requiring future payment. Current liabilities are due within one year of the company's operating cycle, whichever is longer. So is it one year is going to be longer, or the company's operating cycle will be longer? Well, most companies' operating cycles are much, much shorter than one year. So the one year would be the longer of the two, and so therefore, for the most part, current liabilities are seen as those obligations that are due within one year. Liabilities can be known. We'll be looking at two known liabilities. They also can be estimated or contingent. A known liability, unearned revenue. When a client pays cash in advance to a company for future products or services, such as NFL teams, so an NFL team will play a game in order to fulfill its obligation, an artist for a concert will perform a concert in order to um, fulfill the obligation of having received the ticket revenue ahead of time. And legal retainers, um, attorneys will sometimes receive legal retainers in order to have their services on hand if needed for a company. So the attorney would receive cash in the amount of $60,000 and would record it as an unearned legal retainer because they haven't performed any services associated with this legal retainer. However, once trial has begun or some work has been done on behalf of the company and some of the services rendered, then the unearned legal retainers, the amount the attorney has earned, this obligation will be debited, so it will be reduced and legal fees or revenue will be recognized in the amount of oh, how much ever m amount of money that they've earned. So this obligation or current liability will be transformed when they earn the money into a revenue legal fees. Now let's look at short term notes payable. It's a known liability. We know how much we were going to owe and we know how much interest we are going to owe. So now we want to look at a couple of um, issues with reference to short-term notes payable, one of which is calculating the note maturity date. So we want to use a calendar year to calculate the maturity date, or another thing we could be looking to calculate is the number of days until the financial statement date. So let's look at two scenarios. One, the note was taken out on November 15th, and then there is a December 31st financial statement date. So on December 31st, we have to prepare financial statement dates, so we have to recognize the interest associated with the note that we took out on November 15th. Now, how do we calculate how many days are between November 15th and December 31st? Well, we'll take the number of calendar days in the month of November, and so every calendar year, um, month doesn't have the same number of days but November has 30 days we'll subtract out the 15th because it was taken the note was taken out on November 15th so there are 15 days in November associated with the note December 31st that's the date we have to prepare the financial statement so December 31st 31 days in December so 46 days of interest between November 15th and December 31st will be the number of days associated with calculating interest for this note. Now let's look at another scenario where the note is taken out on May 25th and it matures in 60 days. So we're going to start the same way that we did with the other one when we looked at the number of days in the month. May has 31 days. So with the moat was taken out on the 25th, so 25 from 31 means there's six days associated with the note in May. There are 30 days in June, so this will be 36 days between May and June. Now, July has 31 days, but if I add in 31 here, it will be more than 60 days. So we want to look at the number of days in July that we will need in order to be able to come up with a total of 60 days, and that will be 24, so the note will mature on July 24th. So now let's look at how to calculate the interest associated with the note. This would be the same as a note receivable. So one company would have a note payable and, and the, that's the company that borrowed the money and then the lending institution would have a notes receivable. 
but these journal entries would be on the book of the entity that owes the money. So let's look at how we would calculate that. We have the face value of the note, the amount that was borrowed was $2,000, the annual interest rate, interest rates are always represented as an annual percentage, so the annual interest associated with this note would be $240. Now in order to calculate daily interest, we're going to use a convention that bankers use and they all use the same thing, so we always, every lender knows and every borrower knows exactly how many days they're talking about when they're talking about calculating interest interest, it's the banker years and days, and that's considered to be 360, so 12 months times 30 month, thirty days in each month. Each month is held um, to the same 30 days, so it's 360 days. So the daily interest, the $240 of annual interest divided by the banker's year and days at 360 yields a daily interest of 67 cents. Now in our example, we're going to say the note was taken out for 60 days, so 67 cents rounded to, um, times 60 days would be rounded to $40. So the total cash payment that the company will pay upon maturity will be the face value of the note, the $2,000 that they borrowed, plus the interest associated with the note of $40, so they'll be paying back $2,040. Now let's look at the journal entries. When they originally take out the note, they will receive cash of $2,000, but it will also give rise to a liability of notes payable of $2,000. Now we'll look at when we're paying back the note, when the company's paying back the note, they will recognize interest expense in the amount of $40, so $40. Notes payable will be the uh, $2,000 that was borrowed, and so now the cash that they'll be paying, they'll be crediting cash for $2,040. Now let's look at another issue. When we have a known liability, a short-term note's payable, but the due date of the note straddles the financial statement date. In other words, the note is taken out in one year, say like 2016, but it's not due in 2017. Well, the financial statement date of December 31st would intervene between the date the note was taken out in 2016 and then time when it's due in 2017. So let's look at how that would be calculated. If we look at our daily interest calculation. This is the same one from the prior page. So annual interest rate, annual interest, banker's years and days, 67 cents a day, 60 days the note was taken out for and the total interest on the note is $40. However, let's look at this. 15 days are only related to 2016. So that must mean that 45 days must be related to 2017 because 15 added together with 45 would yield 60 days. So let's look at how we would calculate this. The company borrowing the money, for, they would have 15 days associated with 2016 in order to accrue for the interest, and the interest payable as of December 31st would be 15 days times 67 cents per day, it would be $10 in interest, so the company borrowing would recognize interest expense of $10 and interest payable of $10. Now they're not going to be paying the note until 2017, so this is just recognizing the interest expense and the interest payable. Now the lending institution will also be recognizing this on their books because they have a contract so they can recognize the interest revenue. So they'll be recognizing interest revenue and interest receivable. Now when the note is paid off in 2017, the 45 days associated with the calendar year of 2017 would be 45 days times 67 cents in interest will give you 30 days in interest. So the company borrowing the money would recognize the fact that they've paid off their interest payable of $10 that, was, uh, that came about as a result of accruing for it in 2016. They also no longer have this note payable because they're paying it off. But they also have interest expense of this $30 associated with 2017. So remember the matching principle, we're going to be matching expenses with revenue. So the expenses and the revenue that it helped to generate were in 2017. And then the cash they'll be paying out would be $2,040. So they'd be paying off the payable and the note and then recognizing interest expense in the current year. 
Now, the company that's the lending institution will be receiving $2,040. They will also recognize the fact that the interest receivable has been received, so it's no longer in effect, so it's going to be zeroed out. The same with the note receivable. The note receivable has no longer due to them, so they're going to recognize the fact that they no longer are owed this $2,000, and then they're going to recognize the interest revenue associated with 2017 of 13 